some combo problem. And will be a few different topic, but uh, trying to focus on combinatoric design, trying to come up with uh, like we could construct uh, a particular setup, particular coloring and functions or assign them some value and try to solve problem related with combo. So let's get started with uh, some simple ones. Um, like a like this one. And some of the assign value problem and one famous example is uh, that's in IMO. Right. And probably lots of you already know that problem. It's stated uh, the sum of is negative. And then if you have three adjacent one, then like sum of numbers around this, it's greater than zero. And then if X and Y adjacent, and then y less than zero, then we substitute this to this negative y, and then x minus y, x, uh, x plus y, x minus y, etc. I forgot. So I'll change that one to, let's say, uh, let's say two y, right? Since change to negative two y, and then z minus y, and as you this thing will definitely terminate, right? There's a IMO special price awarded for this one, and I'll give you. Let me record that one. Kind of, it's a rush. I was a little stuck at the recalling that problem, but uh, I think a lot of you already seen that there are two different ways to assign values. And here we will start with some of the basic one, and then we'll get to this particular problem. All right, so think about, think about this one, suppose, so the problem one. And the first few problems, they're all related to assign a particular value to some of the setup. And this type of problem occurred a lot in chessboard type of problem, like including last year's AMO, right? And number three, I think, right? And that particular setup involving assign them not only one, zero, those more frequent one, but also including assign a complex number. So you could study that problem. And here I give you a little simpler one. You have N plus N right angle. And then each one is formed by two segments of length one. Now you form a square lattice and then this will be total you're going to this one will be n by n. And we call this uh, let me recall that problem. We call this uh, if this angle to the uh, going up or go right, we call this type A. So type A is 
the side go up or go to right. And then type B is go down or go to the left. Okay, so ask you to prove type A, type B has the same number of angles. So I think about how do we do this particular problem. And then down here, we can first verify in that n by n, indeed you have n squared plus n right angles. Right, so the total number of sides, two n squared plus two n, that's definitely correct. So that means all of this n squared plus n angles are used. And if I use, that means each side belong to one. Um, how do we show those are equal? What shall we do with this one? You could start with uh, some smaller cases, let's say n equal to two. And then you check how many are this type of angle. So those one, this is, going up and then this one and uh, this one. Okay. So in type two, indeed those type A, uh, actually I think I labeled them wrong. I should go the other direction, but you got the idea and uh, you can see Those angles going up, going right, equal to those angles going left, going down. And when you from here, you can see even as simple as it is, this is two by two. We have more than one way to construct them. And then if you have to reason, like in every case, they are equal, that's tedious. And then you won't be easily move from A equal to two to N. So you want to relate this to some functions or down here, some values. And let's think about how do we assign them value. We could do this way. Some of those uh, assigned value ways, you just have to memorize. It's kind of like people trying to look for a better way to represent it. And then some people come up with a smarter way of doing this. And yeah. 
n. Okay, so you get here those many. Just remember this all uh, all of this the field with uh, this is uni square. Okay. Uh, what number we want to assign them? We do this way. Here we do starting from minus one, minus two, and this will be minus n minus one. This minus n, and then going up, the number increasing. So zero, negative one. This will be negative n minus two, negative n minus one. All the way to here will be n minus three, n minus two. And then see this n minus two. So the, it will end at zero and negative one. And this one will end with negative one and negative two. Okay. So we, since we label this way, and you'll find out uh, this, if we just give them one number for each square, it's hard to distinguish between this, uh, this angle orientation. So with this one, we're thinking uh, we could just augment it. Instead of giving each one, we gave, uh, instead of giving each square a number, we could give each side a number. So we just still keep those one those number and uh, with those numbers, it's we label them on the vertical edges. So you can see all the vertical edges are consecutive. And then this horizontal one, we also do this. And since this vertical is decreasing, the horizontal, we will make it, uh, make it, uh, like increasing. So we do this way. Uh, this one, one, so give this side and zero, negative one. And then the top edge will be negative uh, minus one. And all the other ones same. So with this way, you can easily see this this kind of angle. Oh, uh, let's say it's this angle, right? This angle. If you look at this angle, say this one down here. That's a, we call this type A. And if it's type A, you can easily see those two numbers, the two side number add up to one. And then the other one in the type B, which give you this going to left and going down, those two number, zero and negative one. So the sum, is next in one. And then we also have the other two type of angle, right? Uh, like this one and this one. Those two, 
if we see that the sum definitely equal to zero. Now, when we look at this one, by the way we assign them, you can see the number add up to zero, right? So that tells you the sum of all four kinds of angles should equal to zero, and which gave you A time one plus the, the B type time negative one should equal to zero. And then here we show those two are equal. And then this problem done. So this is assign the value on the edges. And this type of thinking, I mean, at first probably a little difficult, but once you seen one or two problems like this, then you say, okay, this is pretty standard. And since uh, angle had two sides, so, and then they care about orientation. So you want to label the two sides and you want to make the type A and type B have different value, and then they are related like what we did here. Okay. And second one, think about this thing. So for this one, it's uh, basically it's a tessellation of triangles, which means on the surface are covered with the triangles. And then those triangles only connected on the vertices. So no let vertex on side of other triangles. And you do this way. If you color vertex with red, yellow, let's say blue, and then you find out if the triangle has three different, and we label those, if they in this order, this red, yellow, and blue, this, uh, say this one, clockwise, we call it type A. And then if it's counterclockwise, we call it type B. And here also show the type A and type B numbers are equal. And when we say this is clockwise or counterclockwise, we observe it from far away. So how do we do this one? Right, and this setup, uh, we understand the setup, right? If you are uh, not sure, we can explain a little bit more. So it's like a uh, simple cases. Suppose we have a, this one, and the, you just cut this into triangles. And then all the vertices you color with red, yellow, blue. And then you observe it. If it's this red, yellow, blue, clockwise, we take type A. And if it's counterclockwise, we call it type B. And then of course you also have other ones and that type C, we don't care. And we just want to see this uh, red, yellow, blue, Clockwise and counterclockwise, they had the same number. Hmm. 
So yeah, what we do for this one, earlier one, if we have an angle, we give the two side and then we calculate the sum of the two side. And here you have a triangle. And triangle, what you want to do, uh, same way you want to give them like uh, those two different types, you want to let them have different value. And then all the other ones will have, you prefer to have them equal to zero. So what we can do with this, quite naturally, we think we label the vertices. Um, what number we label them? And maybe think about let's red with one, yellow with zero, and the blue with negative one. And how can we make this R? Y, B, make this one, the value, probably like a absolute value equal to this. Uh, but the different in sign and the, all the others, all the other random one equal to zero, right? That's if we can do this, then uh, we probably apply some counting technique and we can solve this one. So how can we do that one? Mm, quite easy to think we check their difference. If we check the difference, uh, you have to make sure that if anything that are equal, need to be equal to zero. And then if they are not in this order, should also equal to zero. Okay. To check whether those equal, quite easy, we can say this calculate the difference, either absolute value or square or sum or sum of squares, etc. Those three what it says, we label them X, Y, Z, we give them this one. Uh, let's just check. Can, if we just simply, definitely not the first degree, they're just equal to zero. And if we do absolute value, can we get, if we do absolute value, then you know that the order, you cannot distinguish. So it's not absolute value. That means it's also not square. And then if you think about, if we do this one as a cube, if we have this one's cube, and if I need, two are equal, then clearly this whole thing should equal to zero. So that means this only not equal to zero if it's red, yellow, blue, one of each. And then one of each, you will see, you can separate them into two kinds clockwise or counterclockwise. And if we use this value, we check if it's clockwise, this one will equal to uh, how much? This is one, and then this is one. And C minus X. So if it's clockwise, 
is negative six. And if it counterclockwise, that's equal to six. So this one is perfect. And we show this indeed, that's uh, clockwise red, yellow, blue triangles and counterclockwise red, yellow, blue triangles have the same number and then this is done. So this is assign them like uh, on the value and assign that each vertex a specific value. And here you can, uh, Max gave you a simple one for you to consider. And this one, we have multiple way of doing this. Uh, most likely probably using coloring and try to think if we can use this assign value way to do this. So it's a eight by eight chessboard. And then this particular piece, it can only go up, go right, or go bottom left by one step. So ask you if we go from bottom left, go from here. I don't play chess long, so I don't know. We, do we call this A0 or the other way A0? But anyway, just call it this. So if you start from A0, can you go over, go over all squares? exactly once. So let's you do this, right? I mean, if there's uh, like, this. what do we call it? In the chest, what do we call it? Those, uh, not the ninth. But anyway, that's, uh, if in Chinese we call it Ma, but I kind of forgot what it called in English in chess. If it's go that way, you everyone know, uh, you can just use uh, coloring to do this. And this one, uh, You could also do similar way, but uh, it's not as straightforward as the other. So let's try to think. Uh, if anyone has a, uh, a hint, feel free to discuss. So this type of things you prefer to unify the three step, quite like uh, last year's AMO. And the allow step, if you could assign them um, a function or value or something that uh, behave the same under these three different moves, then likely, your way is closer to the solution. So this one,
or P2. Uh, going up, going right. And if we set our coordinate system, so this X coordinate increase one or Y coordinate increase one or they both decrease one. So that means either they increase one, or so the sum, if we label those number, let's say from zero to seven or one to eight, doesn't matter. And then you will calculate X plus Y. And then each time you see X plus Y, the change will be always one mod three. and equal one mod three, because either it will increase by one or it will decrease by two. So those are equal to one mod three. And then if we do one mod three, then pretty easy. You could just, uh, there are total 63 squares and you calculate how many numbers are one mod three? How many are uh, like two mod three, et cetera? Right. If this one can go over, that means it should, each type should be 21, and then you move because it starts from zero. So Let's change zero one two zero one two. This type of change. Um, by doing this mod three, you notice uh, the numbers like a zero mod three. Zero mod three square. You have how many? And that one is you have one down here zero zero, and then you have four here. And then you have more and you calculate this one. And I think this number will not give you 21. All right, this one's four. The next one will be seven. And then after seven, this one, uh, if we calculate it, should be six. And then this one's three. So this is only 20. You have 20 of this mod, zero mod three type. And that means you won't be able to get the sequence to cover all the squares, right? So this is like a relatively simpler way, a simpler problem. All right, so next we talk about uh, constructing some functions. Okay. So first of all, think about this one. If you have um, like n pile of pebbles, And then you rearrange into n plus k piles. So just put them together, rearrange into n plus k, and then prove there are at least k plus one pebbles 
in a smaller pile than before. So what shall we do with this one? And this one seemed quite intuitive, right? You put them in more piles, so. But then uh, directly prove it will be a little difficult. So that's, uh, some of the characters uh, combo problem might have. It's, if you just study one particular, it could have lots of different uh, scenario. If you just study them as whole, maybe could give you some insight. Hmm. And one way to study them as whole is just give them a character function, some variable associated with it, and to compare whether a pebble in a bigger pile or smaller pile, that you need to find out it is in how big a pile. Each one will have a number. So, Suppose initially it's in a pile with A pebbles, and then after rearrange it to go to a pebble, a pile with B, uh, B pebbles. And we need to consider those two. But then if you directly do the subtraction, now that's, uh, that's easy. So what we do, we can compare this outer pair. It's not our original one, but it's a reciprocal. And then in that way, we just need to study the uh, Y coordinate and X coordinate difference. And then you want to show there will be at least k plus one numbers. The uh, difference is positive. How do we do that? We can consider their total sum. To find the sum, what we can do, just naturally, you do the row and column, that's the X coordinate, Y coordinate. And if you do that one, you see that the total sum for each row is just B number of balls. Each one will be has one has a value one over B. So that's one. Right. And then that's after you do this you find out that uh, all the uh, X coordinate is original n pile. So this X coordinate, sum of X coordinate is n. Sum of Y is n plus K. And then this differ by n, but this number, less than one, greater than zero. So you need at least K plus one number to increase the outer number N to N plus K. And then this one done.
Next, um, give you another one. Also, constructing a function. And you have a necklace with 2K white bit and 2M black bit. And then you cut it, and then this you want it evenly distributed to distribute to two people. Uh, each one with K and um k white and um, black bits so ask you what is the minimum number of cuts so that they can be evenly distributed okay uh, and this one how do we see Right. And down here, even so, you need to give the person uh, like connecting segment. You could cut them all and then just count K, white, and black, and then that's done. But you know that definitely far from optimum. So I think about How many cards we need for this one? And this one, the function for this particular one, not exactly easy to calculate, uh, easy to think at first. And I hope you realize because in the end, you want to cut this just into two equal right. so that's the white and black they kind of uh, kind of uh, like have restriction on each other so if you have a good way of rep representing the relationship between the white then likely you can interpret the relationship between the black, right? Like you get the white setup, then where the black lies, you already know. So how do we, uh, how do we do that one? And 
natural thinking is you just label each one of them. And here it's just a, like a, a little bit you could gain from experience. Uh, you want to label the necklace or you want to label something because in the end you're going to cut between the bits. So it would be better to label the space between adjacent bits. So we label the adjacent, the space between adjacent bits as one, two, all the way to 2K plus 2M. And then we want to find out the, uh, the relationship between the white and So I think what number and one primitive thinking is I'll just uh, count the distance between adjacent and white and that definitely can give the relationship but then the following reasoning is almost impossible. And think about you want to give each one K plus M bits. So wishful thinking, if there's a already evenly distributed, then that's probably done. So we can just see from, let's say, the S location, right? Remember that's a, a space between the bits. S location to I plus K plus M, how many white? And then we can, if that's just equal to K plus M, uh, if, it, if that one is uh, total, you have K, then this is just done. If it's not, then we can do some adjustment. So we use this, this one set as WI. So WI is from I's position to I plus K plus M position, how many white bits? And then of course, when this thing, if it's a go over, you know, you're going to do this mod 2K plus 2M. And so if one happened, like I said, if if a certain W I equal to K, then this just set. We just cut from that's I, and then the other one we cut from K plus M. And then if it's if the one we pick does not equal to K, what shall we do? Let's think about each one of them, WI and W, uh, so like W1 plus W2, all the way to W2K plus 2M. When we add them together, you know, each white one is calculated exactly K plus M times. Then this just equal K times 2K plus M. Okay, plus two M. And then the average just equal to K. So if it continues quantity, then we can definitely say there definitely exists one that's equal to K, but this is discrete. If this one's discrete, Let's think. What happened? And we cannot say there's definitely a WI equal to K, but uh, what we can definitely say is you have WI less equal K. 
and then wj will say equal k, that's for sure. And then next, think about how much is change adjacent one when you change you will only the uh, maximum change is just one right you have a black and then you move to a white if a white over white or black to black or even white to black Either way, there's four cases, the difference of the value always less equal one. Now you can see from here, you have a number greater than k, less than k, but the change, each step is just one. So definitely exists x from one to all the way to k plus two m. And then this equal to K. And then that tells you, now you can just cut from X position and X plus K plus M position. And then this is done, right? Okay, uh, like I said, the next probably will be uh, good time for you to discuss the like the one I mentioned I forgot which year but then you can easily uh, retrieve that problem uh, next, let me think to what I should give you we only have a few minutes uh, we could give you what what like uh, uh, that's in the first set the uh, first class I gave you some problem at the end and I didn't got time to finish it if you interested in doing that one i can show you how um maybe just roughly speaking and you know this i say this simple problem and this type of uh, construction is pretty useful you have n people participate in uh, let's say chess tournament and then every everyone uh, every pair need to play but uh, everyone will play at most one game each day and then uh, ask you to construct uh, an agenda like a hot list to and make the number of days needed minimum. And this is a classical problem. And I'll just quickly demonstrate it to you and then you will see how to ring this. So M people, M people, what we do if you study that one this is a think about graph theory this will be a complete graph and then complete graph you want to kind of uh, like dissect this into i forgot exactly what the right word in English should call this, but then uh, this type of problem, it's depend on whether even or odd. If even, you do this way. We construct uh, regular 2n plus one polygon. 
uh, 2K, down here, 2K minus one. Maybe let's say just took it plus two, make it easier. So what we do is one, two, three, and this one, let's call this M plus one, M plus two, and I'll just K, K plus one, K plus two, and the last one, two K plus one, and then here you have one that's two K plus two. Right, so now everyone already, I mean, everyone can play. And how do we do the second day's agenda? What you can do is you can just rotate this to the next, rotate this whole figure to the next position. So next one, the first day is one with 2K plus two, and then two with 2K plus one, et cetera. And the second day will be two with 2K plus two, and then one with three, and 2K plus one with two, et cetera. So just rotating this and then, if we follow this one, this uh, every day everyone gets played, and then this game can be finished in n minus one days. All right, so this is even. Uh, if this one's out, what shall we do? What shall we do with this one? Also pretty easy because right now definitely it's uh, each day one person will not have opponent. So if that's the case, you could just remove this one definitely gone. And then you just left with one loner and then all the others. And with this way, you can do exactly what we did earlier. Next, just keep rotating this. And then once we get this, you can see everyone will get to left empty exactly once. And this is the most efficient. And then this just done, right? Um, so this type of put them in a circle and then rotate is a, like a classical approach of solving this, the complete graph. And sometimes you might be this segment Sometimes might be a triangle. Uh, Sometimes you might get a like rectangle, like four. Not really a rectangle. It's more like a you know in in square in a circle. You have four points, then they will intersect exactly four points. You will have exactly one intersection. That kind of thing. Right. So just knowing this type of thing, doing this uh, disk rotation is a classical way of solving them. All right, so I think I will stop here and thank you for your patience.